I would like to talk to you for eight minutes about co-intelligence and how it could be a solution for complex systems. The picture you see here is called the Wheel of Co-Creation, and I borrowed it from Barbara Max Hubbard. And it's actually showing that the whole world is into a crisis, not only healthcare, economics, finances, religion, you name it. And that we only will get out of it when we change our worldview. And that the worldview we have now could be described as an ego system. And that we need to move into an ecosystem, a conscious ecosystem. And I will use pictures and metaphors to support my story and to make it in eight minutes. And what you see here next to me is supposed to be a termite hill, a termite mount. So imagine me being this high and the termite mount being much higher than me. Termites are being called the master builders of nature. The height of a termite mount can be the equivalent of a building with 180 stories, 800 meters high or something. The inside of it has constant temperature, constant humidity, even in desert-like environments where the difference between night and day can be 30, 40 degrees. So some scientists even study termite mounts to uh, understand something about global warming and solutions for global warming. Scientists in Africa took three days to pour 10 tons of liquid cement underground. And then after weeks of waiting and weeks and weeks of digging, what they found was a total city. An intelligent system like you could compare it to building the wall of China. And a termite doesn't even have a brain. <laughs> so what's happening here? It's what we call co-intelligence. Co-intelligence is the intelligence of a living complex system. And that intelligence is not in the parts, it's in the relationships. And the relationships are also what explain a flight of migrating birds. They don't move with a leader. Everybody to the left, that's not how it works. It's all instant intelligence. They share a field. It's in the relationships. And the key to flow, the key to co-intelligence is synergy. Probably nobody studied synergy like one of the geniuses of the 20th century, Buckminster Fuller, who actually redefined the term. He defined it as the behavior of whole systems unexplained and unpredicted by the parts. He also defined it as emergent behavior, and his favorite definition was how nature works. Another person who was involved in synergy and wholeness was the quantum physicist David Bohm, who said wholeness doesn't reveal itself in objects and in things, it reveals itself in relationships. Because wholeness is not a thing, it's the source of all things. And wholeness is also what will help us to solve complexity and all the complex problems of our society, but the right picture is more how we behave. We're more like ice cubes than water. And water is probably the simplest example of what synergy is. If you add two gases, you should get a gas. Instead, you get water, and water is a total miracle. You cannot explain it by adding up the parts. We're more like ice cubes, colliding, cold. That's the ecosystem, and what we need is an ecosystem like water. The culture is actually what it's about. Culture in a relationship, in a family, in a community, in an organization. And culture is like the gravitation field of Earth. You don't see it, but it influences everything. Culture can be open or closed. Culture that is open knows synergy, because there is free, free flow of energy. In closed systems, there is entropy instead of synergy. In open systems, you have flow. In closed systems, you have resistance. One of the people who spent his major career on synchronization of systems is Art Winfrey, a biologist. And he discovered that what all systems that synergize have in common is feedback. 
feedback it, by listening to each other, you can synergize. And that the most effective teams behave basically like water. Water, when it boils, has chaos building up, and all of a sudden, the entropy is too big, and the system opens further, and it becomes steam. It changes in nature. It's a quantum leap. And that's what the most effective teams do. They can hold the tension of the differences while staying connected. That's how synergy happens, and that's how win-win happens. Win-win is not a middle ground between positions. That's compromise. Win-win is more like the apex of a triangle. It's not a transaction, it's a transformation. It's a higher order. All of a sudden, the space opens and co-intelligence co appears. And co-intelligence is what brings the higher solutions. So what we need, actually, is dialogue. Dialogue is what brings coherence in human energy fields. And dialogue is not like a common conversation. You only have dialogue about things that really touch your heart. When you're in flow, you're actually in a state where you're involved with heart and soul. So what we need is more heart and less head. The mind is what divides us, judging. Judging differences. When you want synergy in a group, what you want is not just tolerate differences, you need to appreciate them. You need to love the differences. You need to know that it's due to diversity that synergy happens. That's how an orchestra functions. The model of organization for these days is the Philharmonic Orchestra. All different people, very strong individuals, but they make one sound. And they do that by listening and by serving the total performance of the whole group. So dialogue is actually our way to get to co-intelligence and to solutions that nobody could find alone. And that's why I'm so happy to be here and to hear also patients being involved. Nobody has a position where they cannot make a difference. We all can make a difference. Thank you.